Welcome back to my Python tutorial series about constructing a recursive descent parser for a calculator language. And to start off, I completely forgot, but in the last video, I forgot to assign these values to the attributes. And I forgot to make these, actually no, these are public. And the last thing I'm going to do before we make the scanner is actually make another function called isNumeric. So the stock uh, equivalent function of this is isDigit in Python, but the problem with the isDigit function is that it also treats uh, sign characters as digits, so such as uh, the subtraction sign. So if I was to say uh, minus three, it would return the minus sign as a digit. However, I do not want this to be the case in our scanner. So what I'm simply going to do is create a try uh, accept function where we try to cast the character to an integer. If it succeeds, we return true. If it fails, we return false. So if we pass an s, we try to cast uh, s into an integer, it fails, we return false. And so now we're actually going to continue on to the main portion of today's video, and that is the scanner. So the scanner if you remember correctly from the last video, is the finite automaton. So we're going to give the scanner some input. Let's say our example input would be 3 minus 5. We're first going to have to make an empty list for storing our tokens, and we're going to create our iterator over the input. And uh, instead of using a for loop, I'm going to use a while loop. So we're going to say while true, and we're going to use this to iterate uh, over the tokens using the iterator. And to begin with, like we said in our last video, here we have our finite automaton. We need to loop over the integers, and if we encounter a decimal, we need to loop over again. And if we counter another decimal, we reject it. So we can't accept values such as, let's say, we need to accept 3.45, but we need to reject 3.4.5. So we need a way to track how many decimals we have. So I'm going to say first decimal is equal to true, equal to 1. So what this does is we're going to track the first decimal value. And we're going to do that at the beginning of each loop. So we're going to get our first character in our example input. And we're going to say my iter dot peak. So we're going to get three, but we're not going to increase the index. We're going to say if char is none, just in case we reach the very end, we're going to return our tokens. So if we reach the end of the list, we're going to return our tokens. Else, we are going to consume, which is the next symbol. Now the next symbol returns the same as this peak, but before it does that, it increases the index. So we return the same thing, but we increase the index. So now we need to check. And as we stated before in our grammar, we have three things we need to check for in our scanner. Addition, subtraction, and for a number. So we're going to say if our character is a plus sign, then we're going to make our token is equal to a class token. We're going to call it OP because it uh, refers to the operand production. And I'm actually going to derive this real quick. So this would be a num token with a value of 3, referring to the token class, where we have a token and a value. And we're going to, for the subtraction symbol, we're going to give it op as the token and a value of minus. And then we're going to give it the 5 value, excuse me, a token of num and a value of 5. So we're going to say op if we encounter a plus symbol, 
and we're going to give it a plus. And then we're now going to append this token to our token list. So we append this to our list, and we basically continue through the loop. Else, if if character is a subtraction symbol, we're going to do the same exact thing. Except this time, instead of passing a value of plus, we're going to pass in a value of minus. And we're going to append this token. The last thing we need to check for is a number. So we're going to say elif is numeric of our character. Or, just in case, let's say, what if we pass in not just 0 0.45, but what about 0.45? So we need to check to see if our character is a decimal to begin with. And then now, what we have to do is since we're going over character by character, we need a way of storing the previous numbers inside of a string, for example. So we're going to say number. This is where we're going to construct our number from. And we're going to make a second dairy for loop. And this might get a little bit confusing, but hopefully you'll see. We're going to make a Boolean value of continue equal to true. We're going to say while continue is true. We're going to say if the character is a decimal. Now we need to check to see if this is the first decimal value or not. So we're going to say if first decimal is true, then we're going to set the first decimal equals to false. That This way, when we loop again and our first decimal is not true, then we're going to say error. So we're going to say print error multiple decimals in single number, and we're just going to return none from this function. So we loop over once. Now remember, first decimal is already 1. So when we come here, if we encounter a decimal for the first time, it's already 1. We set it equal to we set it equal to 0. We loop again. And then if we counter another decimal value, this should trip as false, and then we print it out. So now, once we encounter it, we need a way of storing the decimal. So we're going to say our number here. This is what we're going to construct. So each time we encounter an integer or a decimal, we're just going to append this to the end of the number. So we're going to say number is equal to number plus character. In this instance, our character is actually just a decimal point. And then what we need to do is get the next, excuse me, not the next, but we need to peek ahead at the next token, I mean at the next character. We need to see if it's numeric or not. Because if it is numeric, we need to continue this continue uh, this while loop. But if it's not, we need to break out and go at the very top again and restart. So we're going to say is numeric of char or our character. Actually, we just need to do this. Or character. We need to make sure whether or not there's that. We're going to say character is equal to my iter dot next, and we're going to continue. So if this character is numeric or it's a decimal, we're going to continue this while loop again. And if it's not, then we're going to uh, make a new token. We're going to call it num, and we're going to pass in the number. And then we're going to append this token to the end of the tokens list. And then we're going to say continue is equal to false. This way we break out of the loop. So this loop is simply our first finite automaton here. Oops. Put this, put this to the side. What we need to do is loop here. We're going to keep on looping until we find a decimal. Once we find a decimal, we need to loop again. So this is this whole entire while loop is this entire loop here. So now let's say 
we encounter the decimal. If it's the first decimal, we need to uh, append the decimal to the number, get the next value, excuse me, not the next value, we need to peek at the next character. If it's numeric or it's a decimal, we consume it and then we continue on in our loop. If it's not numeric, we need to exit out and see if it's an operand or not, which it most likely is because it's not one of these. So then we append the token, we append the number, and then we set continue to false and we break out. Now let's say, what if our value here is not uh, a decimal? Therefore, if it's not a decimal, it has to be a numeric value. So what we're going to do is we're going to say number is equal to number plus character. So now we're going to append our character to the end of the number list, excuse me, to the end of the number string. And then we're going to look at the next, not the next, we're going to peek ahead at the next value. We're going to check for end of input. So if it's at the very end, this would be if we reach the very end, 3 minus 5, we reach the very end. And what we're going to do is we're going to say our token is equal to token of num, because it's a number. And we're going to append it. And then we're going to return our tokens. And if it's not the very end, if there's something else, we're going to peek ahead again. And we're going to see if it's numeric or not. Or if it's a decimal. And if it is numeric, we're going to consume it using the next statement, and we're going to continue. And if it's not, then we need to append the token. Create the token and append it. And then we need to break out of the loop. So this is what we do to break out of the loop uh, if the next character is not numeric or not. And then for our last part of the scanner, we need to have an else, just in case, if it's none of these statements. So if it's not a plus, not a minus, not a decimal, not a numeric, it's something else. It is an unrecognized input. So we're going to print out unrecognized input, and we're going to print out the character that is unrecognized and we're going to return none. So this right here is our working example of the scanner. So to begin with, our scanner only has to scan three possible inputs. The addition sign, the subtraction sign, and a number. So first, we create our tokens an empty list, we create our iterator, and then we have a loop that keeps on looping until uh, a return statement is found. So we set our first decimal to 1, which simply means that we have not encountered a decimal. We peek ahead in our list. If it's empty, then we return the tokens. If it's not, then we consume it. Then we need to check is our character uh, an addition sign or a subtraction sign. If it is, we pass in the token op for operand, and then we pass in the appropriate value. If it's numeric or it's a decimal, we need to construct the number from scratch. So what we do here is we have an, uh, a loop that simply just keeps on looping through the input of numbers and it just keeps on uh, appending integers to the number and then we take that string and then we create a token from it. And so this is how we would construct our finite automaton scanner for our parser. And that is it for today's video.